My name is Jerry Vasey and the show is I Can't Write Right, right? Anyway, uh, have you started your book yet? I'm here to try to talk you into writing a story somewhere along the line. You can do a long story, short story, but you need to put something on paper, even if nobody else reads it. And I have a guest today, Pamela. And how do you pronounce your last name? There's two different ways to do it. One is English uh, and one isn't, right? Uh, it's French. Um, and in the U.S., they say Pouliot. In uh, Canada, it would be Pouliot. Oh, uh, okay. And I have another guest down here that's staring at the TV set. <laughs> Looks like she's ready to go to sleep though, a couple times. Yeah, I think she's settled down a little bit. Uh, yeah. This is Shola. Shola. She's a Mexican hairless. Oh. Uh, the name uh, of the dog, Mexican hairless, is Sholowitz Quintly. Whoa. And they call them Sholos for short. So that's how she got her name. I, uh, in Spanish, an A at the end of, uh, you know, some words like senora and senorita okay. uh, denotes femininity. So um, I took the O off the end of sholo oh. and put an A. So there she's shola. So I'm shola. I know who <laughs> I am. Now, I see the dog is on the cover of the book. Yes. And that's why we have it here because it's... We're just people, that's the star of the show. Right. And what prompted you to write a book? Well, um, I'm also a cosmetologist, and one of my clients uh, has SAD, which is a seasonal affective disorder, mm -hmm. and uh, said that winters can be really hard. And so I'm also on Facebook with her, and I was putting on a lot of posts with Shola's pictures and little writings about her or whatever and um, she said that when she gets up in the morning the first thing that she likes to do is get her cup of coffee sit down and read the post and look oh. at the pictures and that it just started off the day it made her happy or you know made her laugh or whatever and so then she said in the next breath you know you need to write a children's book about that dog oh. and it was one of those light bulb moments where you just think, I guess I should write a book about this dog. So um, anyway, I did, um, as soon as she had left, I started jotting down ideas and notes and things like that. And um, it just came together. It just, you know, it, it didn't seem like work at that point. I, I found writing, writing isn't work. Just take a pencil and paper and just start draining your mind of your thoughts. And now, I've always contended that barbers and cosmetologists could write a joke book or a story book about themselves, but now I looked at your book a little bit and it looks like you wrote it from the viewpoint of... Uh, uh, my four-year-old granddaughter. Granddaughter. Yes. Um, I was trying to uh, figure out kind of almost an introduction, how do you get it started? And um, my, our, my daughter and our four-year-old granddaughter, at the time she was four, uh, live with us. And so I thought, um, just watching their interaction, which uh, she's, and Shirley is, is the favorite little human oh. in the house. And um, so I was watching the interaction. Oftentimes they would, you know, when, when Ann Shirley was in the bathtub, I'd plop Shola in with her and stuff. So um, I thought, you know, maybe if it's told through Ann Shirley's eyes, like she was telling the story. Um, and actually I was quite pleased with it. It's, yes, being a from very that nice point book. of view because, you know, what's cuter, kids and, and animals, kids and pets. And, and it's got enough writing in it so that it like some of your children's books are almost all pictures for really, really young. Right. Yours is a little old, bit older, yeah. but not too old. No, I, I think, I mean, I'm sort of putting the age group, you know, Anne, Anne totally understands the story. Of course, she's five now, but, but the story has to be read to her. Mm -hmm. But she totally gets everything. Um, and I would think probably you might start losing some kids up around well, our oldest granddaughter, uh, Shannon Day, is um, she just turned 12 in June, uh -huh. and our our, me our middle granddaughter, um, 
um, Isabella Delphia, it will be actually in about a week or so, we'll, we'll be turning 10. Wow. So I'm, I'm thinking that the age group is probably that span. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, when they reach a, a, the reading age, and I'm not sure exactly first, second grade, maybe when they really, you know, start reading that they could read the book. Um, just long enough to keep them interested, but not so long that they lose interest. Oh yeah, so. I, I know uh, children sometimes will read the same thing over and over and over again, and sooner mm -hmm. or later it's just mm -hmm. passe. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, for my first excursion, and I'd like it to be a um, series. Oh. So the first one will, you know, just sort of the introduction, uh, how we came to get a hairless dog and she actually is from Mexico. Oh. So kind of her journey does here. Does she have a green card? No. She does, she's totally <laughs> legal. <laughs> she won't be shoved back over the border. Ah, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a quaint looking dog. I mean, uh, in my day they would call that a Mohawk hairdo, but then again, it's, it's not trimmed that way, it's just natural. It is just natural, yes. It, it, you know, stands up quite a bit, but of course you can also lay it down and give her the uh, Donald Trump look. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I prefer it standing oh. up. <laughs> yeah, um, and there's two kinds of uh, dogs. So I understand they're called chihuahuas. Um, the, her mom was a deer-headed chihuahua. Um, their face, uh, uh, looking at her little longer snout, um, the eyes aren't quite as uh, protruding. Um, and the apple-headed, which is the shorter face, they're more like the Taco Bell oh, yeah. chihuahua. And that was her mom was a deer-headed. And then the Sholos, um, I'm, I'm not sure of what the DNA, um, as far as the breed, if they have chihuahua in them or what. Um, but that is a, a, a different breed. I mean, it's a, a Sholowitz Queenly. Um, they are a, a native to Mexico, very ancient dogs. Um, go back to the Inca, Incas oh. and Aztecs. Um, you know, they have uh, pictures of them or, or paintings in cave walls and, and stuff. They, I think it's said that they're probably about 3,000 to 4,000 years as far as the breed. Wow. Yeah, so. so that's back the same time as the greyhounds in Egypt mm -hmm. were, yeah. were the same sort of thing. They were very ancient, very well, the DNA is well established. Right, right. But I'm not sure what the, what the makeup is. Um, oh yeah. It would be interesting to find out. It would be. Yeah. Now, um, I know you had a lot of fun writing, which I think everybody I've ever talked to enjoyed the writing more. Uh, have, uh, how do you distribute it normally? Well, um, when, I, when I got done writing it, uh, or felt that I had said what I needed to say for the introduction, um, my husband had asked me, well, what are you gonna do with it now? So I said, well, um, you know, are you gonna try to self-publish or you know, find a publishing company? How are you gonna do that? Well, my kids have always told me whenever I would ask them something, they'd say, Mom, just Google it. There you go. So I actually started um, looking for publishing companies in Vermont. Um, I wasn't, I didn't, they, most of them have like a mission statement kind of in the introduction. And some of them I think are used to having some of the established writers. And so it didn't sound as welcoming. And so I scrolled down through and uh, found Christian Faith Publishing. They were, their mission statement really sounded inviting. Um, they like working with new authors. Um, they, you know, basically said, you, you know, we don't expect anybody to rewrite the Bible. You just good, wholesome family entertainment. And so that's what I was thinking. Bingo, it's, you know, that's, yeah, it that's what it is. From what I've seen of it, it's good. So, um, so I sent them a little, a little uh, message, email, and they got right back to me and we started communicating. And so I actually had to send it in for submission and they accepted it. 
So it went, um, for anybody starting out, it actually went a lot smoother oh. than I would have thought. You know, I think a lot, what holds a lot of people back is the fear of, you know, being rejected or that somebody's not going to like it as, as much as they do. Oh, yeah. um, Nobody's ever liked it as much as the author. True. But, but it did go ver really um, smoothly. So, you know, my advice to people would be to go ahead and submit it. As a matter of fact, a, another a client, a friend, told me when she knew that I had submitted mine, she said, you know, I've had this uh, kind of a book written about a dog that she had, I think uh, a border collie. And um, she said, I, I just never submitted it because I wasn't really sure where to go or where to start or whatever. And people hate rejection. Yes. I don't care what it yeah. is. Well, it doesn't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but she submitted hers, and I just found out this last week that hers was accepted. Wow. So she was very excited. So, you know, ag again, my point is you don't have anything to lose. Go ahead and try. Yeah. It, it doesn't co it'll mm -hmm. cost a stamp, right? Yes. Yeah. Or an email now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah. Everything is mm -hmm. an email. Yeah, this book is about the right size. You can email. You can email. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, um, well, we, first of all, emailing back and forth to... Um, you know, find out what they're about and what they're expecting. And then we, what we actually did was set it up, the, the book itself, set it up, um, is it Excel or Word something on the computer? Uh -huh. My husband set it all up. And um, so what we could do is submit that to them. So again, everything went right through. I mean, I guess you could do it, you know, sending it snail mail, but, um, but we did it through the computer. So it's a lot so, easier, you know? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And it gets there really fast. Oh, yeah. Minutes, you know. Um, now, you said you are thinking about a series of books. What are you thinking about next? Well, the next one, obviously, looking at her, she gets um, lots of comments. Some are compliments. Some are not so much. Um, a lot of times the people, when they first look at her, say, oh, isn't that one of the ugliest dogs in the world? Yeah, that's probably the same <laughs> breed because, you know. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh. Um, and, well, the, the breed, she could have been born in a litter of coated Sholos. It's a recessive gene. Oh. The recessive gene, um, there are certain uh, traits. Uh -huh. One of them is that they don't have a full set of teeth. Oh. So a lot of times when you see the dogs that are the ugliest dogs, they have their tongue hanging out the side oh, yeah. of their mouth. Um, and the reason is because there's no teeth in there oh. or, or less right through the middle. Uh -huh. So um, anyway, she, they get that reaction. Um, but it's funny because after they've, if I've invited them, you know, just come on over and you know, say hi or whatever, and kind of introduce them. And she has very sweet eyes, and she's got an adorable personality. So they see that, and then they say, well, you know, she's not so ugly after all. But sometimes uh, dogs come from puppy mills, and that, right? mm -hmm. that, that would be, if it has a recessive gene, that might uh, create some... Well, the, the, actually, the recessive gene, the, if she were born with coded siblings, um, they will have a full set of teeth. So oh. it's the recessive gene. Only the pups that, that have that recessive gene that are born without the hair oh. um, have the teeth that are like that. So that's, you know, you pretty much know if you look in their mouth and if they don't have fur and you look, you're looking in their mouth, you're going to see that there's not a, the full set. And I, I know you said that uh, you were tired of getting dog hair all over the place, so you don't have that problem anymore. No. Um, the reason, and, and that's um, kind of the first part of the introduction of the book, is um, with my daughter living with us, she came with two German Shepherds, and, um, and they shed. We have an uh, Abyssinian cat that I had adopted. Um, my daughter decided she wanted to get a Siamese kitten, and my husband actually found uh, a kitten in the ditch. Oh. And um, 
we wasn't we weren't sure if it was going to live, but he did. And by that time, you become attached, so he's oh, yeah. with us. <laughs> and then we had a what I call a grand dog, which um, my daughter had when she had lived with us um, as a teenager, had gotten as a puppy. But when she moved out, she couldn't take the dog with her because the place wouldn't allow it. It broke so, your heart, I'm sure. Right? It, well, I she, mean, the daughter moving out, yeah. And yeah. The, the dog gets to stay. Yes, the the dog stayed. So um, we have living at the house, three dogs and three cats. And I brought up wanting to have um, a little lap dog or, or something that would just come and sit with me. And so, of course, my husband was apprehensive about it. Um, so I, I kind of thought, well, I'm going to have to find something that either has very, very little or no fur at all. So um, at the time, a friend that I have on Facebook um, had been putting pictures of a new little puppy that she had gotten. Oh. She lives part-time in Mexico, and it was a Sholo. So I'm thinking, perfect. So I sent her a little message and said, you know, where did you get your pup? And she said one of her neighbor's dog had had a litter. Oh. And so I kind of just said, you know, do they have any more and would he let me have one? And uh, she said, yeah, he does. And he said, yeah, if you'll give her a good home. So the next thing was, how are we going to get her here? And in a matter of weeks, uh, that was in April of, of 2015, um, my friend was going to be coming to New York City to meet up with her uh, daughter and husband for Mother's Day weekend. Actually, I think they were going to be there for the whole week. And she said, well, if you're serious, I'll bring the pup with me as a carry-on. Oh. And so my husband and I drove down, stayed overnight with a relative in Connecticut, met my friend at the airport the next morning, and Ish. drove home with her. Wow. So it really was an undertaking. It, it is, yeah. You were supposed to have that dog. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Everything just yeah. came together. Well, she said, I was sleeping so good and all of a sudden <laughs> he said something. I had to wake up and check him out. I noticed her eyes, she doesn't move her head much, but her eyes take everything in. They absolutely do. Yeah. She's very aware of everything that's going on around her. Now, have you figured out what you want your second book to be about? Well, the, the, um, Kind of judging a book by its cover, I think, is kind of going to be the content uh, oh. of that one. Um, I, I, writing the second one, of course, just like the first, was coming up with how am I going to, you know, start the book. Uh -huh. And um, I said, well, if somebody were to pick up the second book independent of the first, mm -hmm. they would have to, you, you would sort of have to reintroduce what's going on. Yeah. So I started it like that. So of course, you know, starting into it is kind of the reintroduction um, so that somebody would say, oh, there's a book before, you know, but I still know what's going on. And then kind of covering that. There may be some other little things that I put in there. Um, I've started on it. I, I'm not finished with it yet. Um, but the kind of the content is going to be covering um, you know, the, the judging a book by its cover and maybe even touching a little bit on um, being bullied because she doesn't look like everybody else. I mean, usually this ear is standing right up, but the other one, her left one, is always bent down. So I, I say that she has a lazy ear. So that may be kind of an introduction to the fact that she doesn't have hair like all the other little dogs and she has a lazy ear. So that's good for kids because a lot of uh, children, well, more in my era than maybe now, but bullying and mm -hmm. feeling separated from, sure. the, from the crew. Right. Birds of a feather flock together, yeah. but if you got a different feather. Yeah, you, know, you stuck out. You stick out and sometimes you're avoided, you know. Sure. That's going to be good one for, for children. It's about that age that they mm -hmm. need to realize that. Yes. Uh, and, it, and it does, I think... Um, I think it's addressed, you're right, it's addressed more now than it used to be. I mean, it was kind of, you know, maybe perhaps when you were younger, I was younger, um, 
that you you just maybe duked it out or something. Do you know what I mean? Or or oh, just, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Or just went home. You know, you yeah. could escape it. And now with you know modern technology, there's no escaping it. So it really is a problem. But I think it is because it's a problem. It is addressed more in schools. Uh, for this corporation, I tape school boards, mm -hmm. and it's always on their mind. And mm -hmm. how do you address it? And uh, both from the child that's being bullied and sure. the bully themselves, and uh, uh, back in my day, it was sort of like codependent. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if you were bullied a lot, that's how your personality changed. And mm -hmm. if you were a bully, it was almost sure. encouraged. Yeah. Nowadays, it's you know, yeah, there's incidences, but it's they try to address. It. Sure. And uh, so this is why I was thinking if I put it in kind of the form of, um, you know, a child talking about it or saying how she noticed that the dog was picked on or um, insulted or, and maybe through my, do my granddaughter's eyes, how it would make the dog feel. Yeah, you, know, you said so. it yourself first on that uh, it is the same breed as the, what they call the ugly dog on yes, television ugliest. and um, it isn't. It's a very good dog, and even sure. I'm sure the ones that they portray are good dogs, except that they try to. They just look different. Yeah, and they want to. And they want to win a contest. Sure. You know, so they. And but it's how would so the they dog make up a feel? Different group. <laughs> yeah. How does the dog feel? Yes. I, I like that because um, there are people, and I've got them in my family too, that are a little bit different and. They have feelings sure. and they feelings get hurt. And sometimes it's from little things. I, I met up with a um, young man uh, that um, has, um, you know, certain mental disabilities and, but he's high functioning. I mean, he works, but he, he has somebody that come in, comes into work with him and everything. And when he saw the dog, he immediately was taken with her wanted to pet her and ask about her. And um, when I told him that I had written the book, he said, you know, I, I would like one for my nephew oh. who is nine. And I said, the next book I'm going to uh, address um, people that are different and how they often get picked on it, uh, picked yeah. on for it. And he said to me, I think you need to write that next book for adults. So, very smart young man, yes. and I'm sure that he has been picked on, um, you know, for being different. Oh, yeah. And um, had a sometimes good point. They <laughs> sometimes they have a great deal of talent that is suppressed. Um, it looks like we've got about five minutes left. <laughs> so, time flies fast, it does. doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. When you get, especially when you talk about writing. Um, anything you, you want to bring up? in these last five minutes? Um, I can't think of anything. I kind of talked about the book and the and writing it, starting it. Um, oh, yeah, I your dog dresses up for the winter. <laughs> you were telling me you had somebody making clothes? Yes, I have um, uh, Dawn Thurston in Swanton who um, owns a little uh, alteration shop or sewing shop. And when I first... Um, brought Shola, I knew that she was going to have some problems with winter. So I bought material, fleece, and um, took it into her with a, a um, pattern and said, can you make me up basically faux fur? Uh, so she's, she started out, we, we worked together until we found, you know, kind of the right, you know, alterations to make it fit her. And now she just loves, uh, as you can see on this one, the bow on the back oh, and yeah. stuff. She just loves uh, fancying them up for her so she can get and really You said you had quite now. a few outfits. I do. My because... husband has said that it rivals my closet now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she's, uh, she, she's, she's well taken care of in the winter. She has snowsuits and everything. And very well behaved. She is very. And she's... Um, I know a lot of people think that because she's small that uh, she would be very vocal. This is her all the time. Um, as you know, if you walk up to her and she's in the car or at our house, she's apt to bark, but it doesn't really last any time at all. Um, Just enough to let you know somebody's there. Yes. The, the breed, like I said, is very ancient. And what they use them 
four down there. They were they were considered spiritual. Oh. And um, I have had people say, looking into her eyes, and she she'll hold your stare. They said it's almost like she's looking right right into their soul. Um, which She's is watching really, the TV right now. Which is really funny. Looking um, into the soul of the television. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so she sees and, and observes and is very um, in tuned. Yes. So. I can see where that would be spiritual. <laughs> oh. That's what they were down there. Plus little heating bottles because oh, know, yeah. you, can, you can feel the warmth of their bodies. Our so. chihuahua gets hot. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then she'll bury herself. Yeah, she loves them. She loves the burying too, <laughs> yeah. under all the blankets. And you wonder, he's, he's all, it, it doesn't burn you, but it is any hotter, you think it might, oh. you know. I've not, is the dog gonna cook or Yeah, not? well, you feel like that at night. I, I feel like I have a little water bottle there. Yeah. She's very warm. So yeah, we're gonna wrap up in a couple of minutes, okay. and I really enjoyed having you on. Well, and thank you very much for having me. What would me. you say to anybody else thinking about writing? I would say go ahead and do it. Um, you know, don't don't let fear rule what you're doing, um, and don't get discouraged. You know, um, I mean, mine happened to get accepted. Um, it's a children's book. It, it wasn't rocket science, but um, you know, don't be afraid to to try something. Um, it was, and it was fun to write, I'm sure. It, it was, and I'm, I'm, yeah. if I can find the time, I'll sit down and finish the second yeah. one. <laughs> oh. um, you know, we have, I'm not only a cosmetologist, but we have, we're home care providers for a woman that, that um, with um, some issues that lives with us. How um, does she get along with the dog? She likes her. She sometimes makes um, really quick movements and that scares her. Oh, that scares her. Yeah, but, our, but our is the same way. If she just sits there, she's apt to run and jump on her lap and, okay. you know, give her some kisses, so. Well, we got to wrap up. Okay. And uh, I'm Jerry Vasey and I want you to start writing. And if you've written something, please come in. How did you enjoy being on television? I actually, it was quite comfortable. I'm yeah. surprised. And uh, so if you've written something, let us know and we'll get you on the air and you can talk about your adventure and if you haven't written yet, go ahead and write. Get your, get your adventure out there. And if nobody ever reads it but you, you're going to have a tremendous amount of fun just writing it. So my name is Jerry Vasey, and this is I Can't Write, Write, Write is the name of the program. And thank you for watching, and thank you for being a you're guest. Welcome. You're welcome.